Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the January 7th Tri Board meeting. We're all sitting here school committees, represented, finance committee, and then, of course, the select board. So <clears throat> I'm just getting warmed up, sorry. All right, so the uh, first thing on there that the tri board was going to talk about tonight was the treasurer, collector, and the Department of Revenue recommendations about the position, comb combining the position. So, anybody want to jump in? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I didn't know. Do you want to? Do you want to give an update of your? First, we can do we'll jump that. In or? So our group, uh, the subcommittee of the tri board met, and and we we think we should really move forward with a a committee to actively look at this, and that this is something that we should do a, a very good look at. Yes, we know it's been done before, but we should look at it again. And if there's a recommendation, we should bring it forward and let the people decide again. If they choose otherwise, or choose something, we don't even know what the, would be the recommendation at this time. But we do think we should have a, a sub a committee that would look at this, not a subcommittee, a committee. I just like to remind people that it was John Allen and his group that changed the uh, agenda back when. That it, at one time it always had been treasurer collector. And then, in his infinite wisdom, they decided to change it to two different positions. So that's where all that broke up back then. Well, it, no, so, it, was, all, it was two positions. There were but, two people running for it. But it was that always one two. person that ran for both positions. Yes, that's right. That's right. But they were always they are two elected positions in town, even then, right. even when one position. Um, what was that? Twenty years ago, Joyce? Probably. Was this what was when Paul McCreskey oh. was here and left? Right. right, the county's been in the job for right. Actually, that was a really good argument. Yeah, that was a really long time. Yeah. That's when I met Paul. Eighty-seven. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they were half. They were both half positions. Right. So one piece person held them, and then after that, one person held each one. Each then grew into a full-time job. Right. Well, then Mary Pequinot with Rian, a full-time assistant. Rian, and she. That separated the office at that point. Right. That was it. I'd like to add in that we see uh, something a little bit different this time, and because um, you know, or another part of it, at least from the finance committee point of view, we have been, as you know, frustrated for a few years, uh, getting the numbers, understanding the numbers, having them presented in a way that was uh, consistent. Um, we feel on finance committee that we have a real gap in the financial um, management at the, at the top. Not that individual jobs aren't being done correctly, but that it's not getting pulled together in a way. And we see this as an opportunity. Again, when things change, you look at them again. It's a, it's a, it's a time, I think, to look at the financial management structure of the town. Um, when I watch school committee meetings, and since they got their finance director, I mean, he's got his graphs, he's got his explanations, he's got his, you know, he's got all the information at his fingertips. I'm very envious, and I, and I think that it's time. They didn't always have that over at the school. It's always something that was under the superintendent. They were managing on their own. We're still at that level on the town side. We're still struggling through managing on our own. Um, I would love to be, I think it's time that the town catch up and have that same kind of, um, person in who's who's really on top of the numbers at all times and can give us the information and not just the information um, but some interpretation of it um, for example today Gail very, very well said, sends us the uh, where we stand for the year so we've got 84 pages with 84 budgets on it what was budgeted what's been spent what's left but what we don't get from anyone in town is here's what it means most of the departments are doing fine these two or three are in trouble these two or three look like they're in trouble, but they're really not because their expenses are at the beginning of the year. Some kind of interpretation so that when we come to meetings like this, we, that's where we're starting from, as opposed to receiving these 84 pages and each of us individually, if we open it up, spending our 10, 15 minutes going through and trying to figure out on our own without, the, without sufficient background, what does this mean? 
It's that kind of information I think that would be useful, so useful to the committee, so useful to you and anyone, and, and to David and the other positions I would think as well in town that work with the uh, them. And certainly a benefit to the people watching us um, struggle, struggle, you know, meeting after meeting with where do those revenue figures come from? Can and, I? <laughs> can I? I guess add well, on. I, mm -hmm. Certainly listening and agreeing with what you're saying. I think just a kind of a different, uh, maybe a, another way to look at it is that, you know, we go back to 1987 or whatever. I mean, undeniably, the, you know, things have changed. I mean, you know, the numbers are much bigger than they used to be. Um, OPEB didn't exist, laws have changed. I mean, you know, I'm sure just during Gail and, and Joan's tenure, they've seen a lot of changes come through. And, you know, I, th I think the issues have, have outgrown the structure. Um, and what I mean by that, and to, to your point, it's not a question of whether people who are charged with, the, you know, <coughs> financial running of the town aren't doing a good job, but because it's compartmentalized or, you know, it's segregated, if you will, there's really no clear accountability. <laughs> so you've got, you know, the collector doing a piece, the treasurer doing a piece, uh, the accountant doing a piece, the town administrator's doing a piece. Um, and so, you know, I, I'd actually like to look at a couple of options. I mean, I, I think, you know, we, we talked in the DOR report recommended, you know, rethinking the combined treasurer collector, um, I think we really need to look at a concept of a finance director, um, which is a, it's a, it's a twist on that theme. But um, I know that that's what many other towns do as well. I have no idea what is involved mm -hmm. <laughs> in getting from point A to point B. Um, yeah. And maybe that's something that has to happen over a period of time. But I, I really, I agree with you. I think now is the time to really vet all of our options fully and then go back with a recommendation to the town meeting, you know, as to what we collectively think is the right path, recognizing again, it may not be something that we can do by May, it may not happen in the next year. I mean, it may take a while because I'm sure there are legalities around all of that. And again, I'm which I'm completely ignorant on, but I think we need to take a serious look at it. The reality is a really good financial person is ultimately, and I know, you know some people are probably sitting there saying, oh gosh, they're trying to spend money. But the reality is a good financial person who's seeing all aspects of it is ultimately going to save you a lot of money just by bringing things together and having that clear, clear uh, accountability. It's questionable, but... Um the other thing that we need to look at besides that, if we're looking at positions, is that we truly need to look at, if you're gonna separate, or if you're gonna combine the positions, the one thing that we need in talking with Joan and others uh, here in town hall is that we need an HR personnel person. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that is of utmost importance right now also. So we gotta really figure out where you really wanna spend your money. Um, we can't, yeah. we can't, we don't have an abundance. We're cutting budgets. They're two percent. There's things that we haven't done in other budgets um, to make things work. So we need to be cautious on which way we go. But we need somebody in the HR that takes care of the insurances, the payroll, um, that does the benefits, benefits. form. Um, there's other. Th Actually, I kind of sat down to think about that. What we need in an HR person. Mm -hmm. Not sure if everyone's definition is the same. Mm -hmm. From my perspective, um, I think we're looking at somebody who can handle benefits administration mm -hmm. on a higher level, you know, understands insurance, to negotiate insurance, um, someone who would be an employee advocate. I'm sorry, if you're a non-union employee in this town, you have no one to go to. Mm -hmm. You really don't. You don't have an advocate. Um, for hiring purposes. You know, for hiring law, payroll law, um, advisory to disciplinary actions, administering the employee policy handbook. Mm -hmm. um, again, time issues, etc. There's a lot in there that really needs to be um, done. 
and a person strictly HR could help facilitate that. Job classifications, wage scale, wage study, wage yeah. study all yeah. those things that we're so behind yeah. in that it, it really yeah. takes one person to do that. It yeah. really is a separate job in it this is day and age, job. the way the town has grown. You know, I don't agree with combining yeah, both of them. Evaluations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't agree with combining them both right now because already over my lifetime that I've been in town, it's been from one person to two people. And now you've got two people in one office, two people in another office. It, it's grown in size and you have separate issues and you both, you know, the three departments are addressing them individually. And we're, I think we've opened up in the last year or so here now where everybody's communicating with each other. As far as numbers, they've gotten a lot better, you have to admit that. But I, I just, I don't see combining all those two positions right now and, and gaining anything out of it, you know? Well, the, the reality is that with any elected position, certainly us included, um, you're at the mercy of who is running for the position, and you're at the mercy of who shows up to vote, right? I mean, that's how town meeting structured. Um, well, thank God it happened that way yesterday, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the, you know. Pretty bad to have seven percent of our voters come out out um, for a vote. <laughs> but, but to that point, you know, you think about our town meeting, and on average, we're probably looking at 100, and, what do we always say, 130 people, something like that, on average, who really decide the fate of the town in many ways. Um, we have part-time select board, and you have, you know, these other elected positions, and, you know, it, it can work really well, depending who's sitting in the seats. But I think, you know, again, when we look at what the responsibilities are of the treasurer and the collector, theoretically, anybody could run for those positions and find themselves sitting in the seat. Um, we've been fortunate that we've had very, very good people over the years who have filled those slots. But that doesn't mean that that's what's going to happen going forward. And I think given the size of the operating budget of this town, Given, to Joyce's point, the financial strain that many departments feel that they're under right now, given the um, history in town of uh, the voters who show up being very concerned about adding money via, you know, an override or that kind of thing, then, you know, the, the general culture here in Hadley, in my opinion, is people are, prob are willing to spend money, but they want to know that whatever dollars are being allocated are being spent as wisely as possible. Yeah. So that, that's what brings me back to the idea of having one position that's hired specifically with skill sets to get that financial job done and not having the risk down the road of you know, having a weak person find themselves in that slot or yeah. worse. On, on, the, on the financing it issue, I'd like to point out that the school, it's half time? The it's position, two days a week. Not, not even half time. So on two days a week. So this is not necessarily, we're not, and, and even when you're talking about HR, we're not necessarily talking about <laughs> full -time here's person. another full time yeah. job and here's another full time job because every full time job is also a desk and a computer and, that's, and, and it's benefits, not. or maybe you've got maybe those are positions that can be combined. Maybe you've got a you know an HR combines uh, maybe a, I don't know is that ten hours? This is what we need to figure out. Is that a ten hour position, fifteen, twenty? Does that dovetail nicely with the financial director? Or are they so separate? Um, does it work well? Because HR is now being handled by um, treasurer, correct? Yeah. Is that 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 office is handling it? So you get into another person handling HR. They're freed up a bit in the treasurer's office. We cut back there. So it's a real to a certain extent, it's a reallocation of the funds that we're already spending. Um, no question that it may also involve additional money, but can we do better with the money that we have? So that's 
that's one part of it is how we spend our money. And then the other, and, and you're raising the other part of it is who, who are these people who will run for the office? Can we always count on someone? And I'd just like to say, if we have so many extra people in town who are really um, doing um, very adept in finances, I'd like to know why they're not coming out for <laughs> finance committee. Yeah. We have been down to three and four people for the la pretty much since the first year I was on finance committee. So you know, something's going on here that is saying, no, that was saying, no, that's way, way too much work. And you know what? This is my second round on finance committee. It's way more work and, and way less satisfying than it was 20 years ago. Where, you know, so something has changed definitely in the town. We need to we need to step up to the changes that have happened and get get it running a little more easily for us. Yeah, I, I mean, I am pretty impressed with what the school's done with with their <coughs> financial person. Uh, I mean, he's really covered a lot of grounds, and he actually did a good presentation up at Franklin County. It was mm -hmm. up at one of the meetings up there, mm -hmm. and uh, I, there's a lot of people into into something like that where we could get somebody in part time probably and look at some some of these issues that we have but this is the time where we're separating the people that work in the accountant's office and the treasurer's office so that it's not going to be two separate it's not going to be one combined position either because they feel like gail needs somebody right. in her office right they don't she need me and, your, and, and DOR says she should not be in that way so right. so you're going to need somebody else in that office anyway so it all depends on which way the town wants to go with whether or not it's going to be the combined position or two separate positions still and I guess that's left up to the voters well, okay I, I will okay. we're talking about a combined um, treasurer collector which is the DOR's recommendation but Molly you're, are you talking about that or are you talking about something slightly different when you say finance director. Well, because I heard the, the presentation on the investments and yep. clearly you need someone with financial knowledge and skills to right. be able to handle the kind of financial issues that town has. Right, right. And I think, um, yeah, the, the reason I'm bringing that up is that there are towns who have a position that's called finance director and, and to, to Joan's point, sometimes the fin finance director has somebody working for them who is uh, an HR slash benefits administrator. Sometimes that's a completely separate issue. Um, I'd say the same thing about Joan's comment about HR that I did about the financial side. A very good HR person who knows what they're doing is going to pay for themselves over and over again by saving the town money and just being focused on that one area of expertise. Can we get um, a list of other towns that as a finance director well, so, so that's probably what so what I'd like to see we, we've kind of morphed into this now looking at the whole I'm sure Amherst does because that's Amherst <laughs> yeah you North I know you did yeah, but Northampton is a city I want a town we're not comparing ourselves well, to a city <clears throat> some people who are towns that have a finance director is the finance directors their title but they actually feel the purpose of being collector treasurer right <laughs> so it's how you define the title and how you define the roles of the title. Yeah. It's more of a job description. My was finance director slash accountant, but I don't know if the role has grown so much if he's still doing both parts or yeah. not anymore. Which town? Here, Long Meadow? Oh, okay. he here in my be. mind is the key difference between, and so when I use the words finance director as opposed to a combined treasurer collector, I think by the treasurer and collector positions, correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> But I believe they're defined by general law. Yeah. Okay, okay, got that one. Um, so, you know, it, it, if you go to Massachusetts general law, you'll see exactly what their roles and responsibilities <coughs> are. With a finance director, I think typically what you're going to see there is not only are they, you know, providing that combined treasurer collector function, but they're also um, really the budgeting and more of the financial analysis person. Mm -hmm. So they likely have these other key people reporting to them, you know, whether it's one, two, one and a half, whatever, three, you know, it depends on how it's structured. But there's one person overseeing all of that, coordinating all of that, and then bringing that forward to the town manager, town administrator, whomever, you know, select, select board, board, city council, yeah. what, you know, again, every, Town's a little bit different, or city's a little bit different, but that's that's what I'm thinking that's when I say. That, yeah. I th and I think, I, and I'm not 
presuming which one is better than the other, I would just boldly say I don't think what we're doing now is the best long-term strategy for our town. And I think now is the right time to take a look at multiple scenarios. One scenario could be outsourcing components of this for some amount of time until we figure out what works well. You can do that with HR, you can do that with we're, finance. We're, where we're strong and where we're weak. And, yeah, and at that yeah, point right. then make our decision who, who and what we want to hire, yeah, at that point. Yeah. So then again, we're kind of like, it's, it's like a, a look at the whole structure of the finance and the first finance of, of the town. You know, and we might find out that if we, we think the person should be a half time on our side, that it might be wise to combine with some with the schools. And maybe it's no, the, it, you can't do that. Uh, you, We're two separate you, you entities. Might find you can. You you, you can, can so although it's not advised. It's not advised to do that. Does uh, our transportation and building? So correct. He does more than just finance. If you look at the whole thing. You might be able to find some things you can combine, some things, some things can, be shared. Can, can be shared, some things cannot be shared, and you might restructure even differently than you think now. Pur purchasing is, is oftentimes, so, you know, there's, there's a separation, but, you know, offers itself up to some level of um, coordination and consolidation. So, so you're the chief procurement officer for the town right now, um, but that doesn't include schools, you know. Right. So I mean, all all that kind of thing could be looked at and decide. Does it make sense to, you know, to, to your point, that there probably are some synergies between what the schools have and what we have over here that would ultimately save the taxpayers money overall. But you've got to throw the whole thing up in the air. We didn't ask for this. Sorry. We didn't ask for this. Yeah, it wouldn't be feasible. I don't think to. Well, I think there's some things you can share. Well, I, but they're saying you, we shouldn't share. We shouldn't share the same financial person. Well, they're, no, that's they're, not what they're I'm separate. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying <laughs> if we look at the whole structure, you might find there's places we can share. Yeah. I didn't say a specific person. Right, functions that Function. the person performs might be shared. So then again, now we have to decide how to do this. Yeah, so how are we going to do it? So yeah. that's always the hard ideas. part. Yes. <laughs> So the subcommittee talked about there should be a committee who's in charge of this, and, and we should nominate some people to be on the committee. And we, we're thinking a finance committee person, a school committee person, a select board person to start with. We let, uh, invite the accountant and the tra acting treasurer to participate in it. Was the treasurer and the collector? Oh, yes, the treasurer and collector. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, the treasurer and collector, not the accountant. Um, and then the... Um, and then I get two people um, locally, uh, one person locally who has experience in this world, and then try to get somebody from the outside who's been involved in other communities to be in the group as well. Outside of the community? Mm -hmm. Outside Hadley. Mm -hmm. But involved in similar kinds of issues. But has to have the same type of experience with what they with this type so of either stuff. a former person in a position like that, or somebody from the DOR, or that kind of that person. Kind of thing. Okay. Good silence. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think that as on our, I know our committee would like to talk about who would come forward from ours, and I think that we should all meet separately, and um, and come up with that. Or did you want to? <laughs> What's your timeline yeah. for forming the committee? And well, we actually we talked about this a lot too, and, and we, <laughs> you know, the whole thing is kind of interesting. Um, the collector is up for re-election for a three-year term this year. Correct. Uh, yeah. Yes. A year. Two years from now. A year, right? It's not a three-year term. A year. It was a year. She's up next year, year, right, Joni? Connie's term. No, no, no. The treasurer. Treasurer. So the collector, I think, is. She's, she's, a, she's now. Yeah. Collector is yeah. now. Next year. She just took her papers out for this year. She, the collector did? Yes. Yes. So, okay. she, so we're going to be electing a collector in April. So we won't have time to really institute 
I mean, if the committee gets together and gets everything together, that whatever the committee um, decides or proposes has to still go, if there's changes in it, has to go to town meeting. So that's after the April election. Mm -hmm. So that gives you some time, but you don't have to have it all done by the April election, and you don't really have to have it all done by annual town meeting. So you can wait and put it together and have it all ready for fall town meeting, and then at fall town meeting, you can talk about it. Doesn't it have to be an annual? Um, There's some things you have to do on the annual. Is it annual? Yeah, there I think other so. things you can do in the fall. I think if you're changing positions, uh, this is just my recollection from years ago, that that has to be done at an annual. Okay, then that but actually gives you, you check it. that pushes you out even farther unless you try to rush to get it all done for before this one, which are I don't you, think. Are you no. making it a non-elected <laughs> position and an appointed position? No, the or committee will look at that yeah. and decide, make a. And, and we'll make recommendations back to the book. tri board or the select board. To, to all of us, the yeah. tribe board first. Yeah. There, there are two legal paths to doing this. There is an adoption of a, of a local option law, which would uh, change a point, elected to appointed. And I think you're right. That's an annual town meeting. Um, but you're not. That's not what you really are talking about. You're talking about an act of special legislation, which would reorganize. Right. Right. And you can pass that at any any time. Okay. So the second option could be done at either. Either one. Special, special or annual. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's my best. That's the best of my recollection. I'll, I'll double check that. Although, if you go the second route there, you also then have to send that to Boston and get Boston to, yeah, to yeah. move on you and do something for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Certainly, the so sooner we can get the whole situation solved, the better. But we want it solved. We want a good solution, and, and at best, um, we really want it to be an agreeable one going forward, one that there, you know, we all see as this is going to help us, this is going to help the people we have working here, yeah. it's going to help our system of volunteers, finance and select board, and, and the budget moving forward, and HR, all that. If we all see these as things that we come up with a solution, or the, the committee, and, and then, then the tribe board comes up with a solution, you know, I'd love to see it go soon, but it can only, it can only go as fast as it can go. Well, if you're going to have the treasurer and the collector on that committee, did both those positions are up for election this year, right? Yeah. Yes. No, but the, the, is only one year. the treasurer is only a one year. To right, to get back on to the three year schedule. Yes. But you're still going to have an election, is what I'm saying. Correct. Mm -hmm. right. right. Yeah. <clears throat> so. We just need a plan in place, but we can't really enact it. Mm -hmm. There's other times we have to enact it. I would say you just move forward <laughs> as. as you're planning to, and then you wait for the elections to happen, and based on what happens in the elections, you might have to either bring somebody up to speed, or you might have the same people in the same room and you can carry on. I mean, I don't think there's any reason to put it off for a few months because you have elections come out. No, I don't think so either. I don't think, I think you're completely correct. We can go ahead and start, but there's no need to rush is the other other side of that story because you're not going to be able to get it all done before the election you're not going to be able to get it changed before the election well um, i think one of the other discussion topics on the table that's different but it's related is getting some interim help in <coughs> that would which, help a lot that yes is, which will help a, a lot and i and i I think if we're going down this path, we need to wrap this thinking in mind with how that extra help gets slaughtered as well. We have to actually make the decision about extra help pretty soon, so the committee wouldn't even be available to help with that. No, but I'm saying from a mindset standpoint, what the skill sets are of the extra help is pretty important right now, I think. Because it may help help inform this process going forward. Mm -hmm. So, do we want to try to set set some? I mean, are, is any, the finance committee wants to talk a little more? School committee. This is probably newer to you than. Mm -hmm. I, I, need to talk. Yeah, yeah, sure. I know you were brought up briefly on. Right. Okay. So then, sure. then the question is: Do we want to make a? Do we want to talk about it more tonight? And, and Who's our up for re-election on school committee this year? 
Uh, I am, and Tamara is. Funny you should ask. Tamara. Tamara. And there's one other vacancy, I understand. And there's one yeah. vacancy. Right. So there are three positions at once. Anyway, which way anybody's going? Um, I took our papers today for the two year position. Okay, two year position. Mm -hmm. oh. I'm not taking papers out. <laughs> <laughs> For another seat. No. We have two seats. I'm good. <laughs> well, this one's tough enough. We have the same situation here. We have right. two seats yes. up for, uh, right. for election or re election. Right. So, so all right. So, maybe we're, we will meet next. We're meeting next week. We're meeting tonight. <laughs> I know. But to, to actually form a committee and, and charge a committee and, and appoint people to the committee, we can either do that quickly before we go into interviews or after we go into interviews next meeting, or we could wait until the third meeting of the month. And that's just something for us to decide how much time we think we need to decide this. Yeah. Can, can, we have, can I make the motion that we approve the setting up of this committee and the way you described it? One each from those three boards, finance, school, and? Select board. Select, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and that we each put up each of our committees put someone forward on that um, and uh, the treasurer and the collector um, now I assume if this was a I assume since it's only advisory that there's not a conflict with them being on because it's whether it's in their financial interests is that something that's not relevant at this stage for this kind of a committee it's yeah, only advisory I think this is only advisory at this okay point. Yeah. okay and then our other two consultants. Well, I mean, at, at this point, they're both elected, too, so. Um, true, but there still can be a conflict when you're on something that relates to your job. To your job. Yeah, yeah. To your job. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, then the two other positions, which we can um, work on. Oh, yeah. I've started already. <coughs> so. Yeah, I made my call. OK, all right. Okay, so <coughs> and I would I would like to make a that we establish that committee for this select board to approve at their next meeting if possible. And the, the subcommittee's doing such a great job. I'd like to recommend those people on the subcommittee for sure. <laughs> well, that's probably how it's going to work well, out. No, we need to have a little discussion about that. <laughs> <laughs> we do because we have a lot. I mean, we have some work for the for the select board. We do have other things we need to, we need to do. put people on to and. We need to talk about how that's going to flow mm -hmm. because we do have a DPW search coming up, and we have this. There was one other one it slipped my mind. Around. Ambulance. The ambulance yeah, thing the ambulance, coming up, yeah. which actually, John may get his wish there then, because there's two of those I may have a problem with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, we need to have a long talk about how we how we do that. As a select board. Mm -hmm. Good. So we can vote right now. No, 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 no. <laughs> Since everybody else is taking time to think, we should take time to think. Don't feel rushed. There Throw people into the fire. Under the bus. <laughs> the big bus. How, I mean, have you talked to the collector and the treasurer? I know I've talked to the assistant here a little bit about it. Um, you know. We got to see the ins and outs of their departments right now at this point, also. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I just for the way the town has grown in the past 20 years, I, I just can't see putting them together and trying to downsize those two departments right now with the amount of people you have working in them now. You're not downsizing. No, you're doing the work that's being done now, plus and getting a professional position in there so yeah. that you get planning. The, the professional the position, I'm behind 100%, but, but putting both of those yeah. together, I'm not. Well, possibly. I mean, possibly. we're, we're going to look at all this. Yeah, right. we, yeah. may, we, may, we may come back and say, no, the way we're set up is the way to do it, that we just need to make there, there was a big uproar when it was separated way back when, and, and it ended up working out pretty well, I think, over the past years with each department doing their, their own thing, you might say. I mean, it's it it had really had. I mean, just the treasurer's department's grown over the last 20 years. I mean, I'd certainly be interested in, in these meetings to see what the outcome would be. 
what the separation of duties is, where it would lie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not opposed to it in mind. I'm mm -hmm. open minded about it. So I'd like to see what, what the ideas are. Yeah, without taking a little survey and getting the facts together, I mean, we don't really know how it's going to end up at this point. Because, I mean, there's 315 communities in the state, mm -hmm. and almost there's very few that do it the same way. Yeah. Some people even have the same titles, but that person is totally, yeah. does their job totally different than the other one because mm -hmm. that's the way that it's written. Yeah. You know, even though we say it's a finance director, that may not be what we choose. And, yeah. and people shouldn't get hung up on the titles as, as to what we're doing here. But people will. People will, and I, I know it's normal. They'll help but, us right. with that. But, but we should. We should. Have. <laughs> what? They'll help us out with that, though. Yeah, I'll, I'll find a title <laughs> for you. Don't you worry. <laughs> Remember, we have to be able to say it on TV. Oh, okay. <laughs> and also, functions get blurred because I know in Amherst, the accountant has the payroll under her auspices, at least when I was there. And usually, typically, it's under the treasurer auspices. So there's all those type of situations out there as well. Right. Yes. That's right. And that's the same in, in private industry, mm -hmm. too. You see it both ways. Yeah. So. But yeah. See that, that's that way because the treasurer collector are together in Amherst. Yeah. So the, and the accountant is, and table. Right. which is actually the controller. It's called a controller now in Amherst. Mm -hmm. It's different. And then Northampton's kind of set, set the same way. There's a treasurer. Wasn't it a treasurer collector? No, they're two separate. Two yeah, separate they're all separate. So there's a treasurer, a collector, and an accountant in Northampton. Mm, yeah. And then there was a finance director. Yeah. Or is a finance director. Mm -hmm. So, okay, if we're all in agreement, mm -hmm. do we need to vote? I think well, we should. I made a motion, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. I'll second Linda's hey, motion. Yeah. <laughs> to move it. Yeah. For the, for the committee. For the record, could we restate what that motion is? That we establish this committee of seven, no more than seven is a lot, but anyways it would be a representative from each of select board, finance committee, school committee, the treasurer and the collector, uh, and then we have a uh, uh, someone with a town finance background in Hadley and then someone with town finance background not in Hadley. Yeah. And, and that we will make our designations, the other boards will make their designations for the next meeting for school committee, no, school board to act, select board to act. Right. And I'm just seconding uh, Linda's motion, as stated. All right. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Yeah. All right. So that's what we'll move forward with. So time, timing. Um, school committee would like to have how much time to talk about it and finance? Um, I, think, I think we can do this um, with the chair appointing, so I don't think we have to wait till our next meeting. Okay. And we're going to meet downstairs after this, so we'll be set soon. Till next week. Wow. So, okay. So then after the, after, well, see how long it takes us to. We, we may talk about it tonight then. Yeah. So the next meeting, we'll, we'll do it after, after the. Um, interviews mm -hmm. with the police we'll discuss it mm -hmm. and make our and make the appointment to the committee so the in town and out of town um, finance background folks are you looking for suggestions yes we are we have some suggestions that came to our mind um, we reached out to a few of them but if there's anybody else in town who who wants to come forward and there's anybody outside the town they know please submit the suggestions to any anyone in this room and then we'll just get them together and Talk about <laughs> All right. That was a big. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Yeah. It's actually a big so, step just to even decide to talk about something because no one really wants to look at yourself how you do business. We all think we do it quite well. Um, There's worse. There are. <laughs> Okay, so then we we're gonna, the next item on our tribe board was um, a five-year budget projection discussion. Do we want to just go into that? Why don't we, uh, why don't we do the next one? What? We only got yeah. 20 minutes. I, I really want to get to number two, the, the five-year budget projection, even if it's just a 10-minute discussion, because we started this last year but we started it years ago. We finally got it to a point where I have before me something that was a 
I guess the subcommittee has, has uh, done and stated uh, January 5th of this year. I got it this afternoon. Right, this was David's revision from. This is the revisions. Yeah. The revisions. In the last meeting we had. Right. So if you look at the summary uh, of what, uh, just assuming that the numbers that are taken for revenues and the numbers that are taken for expenses are correct, and just for discussion purposes, assume that we all agree on those. You take a look at the summaries, we're looking at some significant deficits. Um, the DOR report um, suggested that we do this five-year plan um, of projection, but that should this projection should lead to a five-year financial plan. And what I'm looking at is FY 16, 17, 18, and 19, going from deficits of 393,000 for the uh, operational budget to a deficit of a million. 186 in year FY19. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but when I look to see what the plan is to, to match those, the only thing that's brought forward is free cash. So you're looking at the FY16 budget using close to 400,000 of free cash to balance the operational budget, all the way up to FY19 where you're using a million one eighty six of free cash to balance the operational budget, to which you should add another three hundred thousand of free cash because that's what we're using to fund the capital. So in reality, next year we, we're close to seven hundred thousand dollars of free cash to balance a budget, and in FY nineteen, that number is almost a million five, and that is not. In my opinion, I don't think that's the proper use of free cash. The DOR suggests that it's not the proper use of free cash. And I know you're sick of hearing this from me, but we've been trying to get to a point where we don't use any free cash to balance the operational budget. We have uses of free cash that um, we have been neglecting, uh, which is why we're in a problem with the, uh, the capital needs of this community and have been for a number of years, because we take this free cash and keep shoving it in to patch the holes in the operational budget. Mm -hmm. Yet we keep going and going and going on this escalating uh, need of, of expenses and without making the appropriate adjustments in, in any revenues. Mm -hmm. So we either have to start cutting and finding new funds or finding new funds or some combination of the two and that should start in 2016. And to sit here and say, okay, we're going to raise it at 2% for FY16, I don't want to be sitting here next year and saying, oh, okay, we raised it last year, now we got to go find another half a million. And the following year, oh, we got to find 800,000. You know, I'd like to know where we're going to get this kind of free cash. Howard, can I just, just to, sure. I, I just looked at this a, a little bit differently, but I may be making a mental leap, so I will ask, I'll ask the author. Um, I didn't take the free cash to balance the omnibus budget line item as a, a recommendation, right? Yeah. yeah. So, but to Howard's point, I think this is more of a, f a form issue. It, the way it's laid out, the appearance is that there's a suggestion that we would have that kind of free cash, and that was we would follow that policy. When you get to the bottom, I think they all say zero. Yeah, Somebody I, has made a, a decision <laughs> that's significant for this community, and I think that we need to have a very extensive discussion on this to find out where we're going to be in three and five years. Right. I, I think we should just be showing the deficit as unresolved exactly. at the bottom. So, exactly. So, but I, I just want to be clear, nobody's, I'm not hearing anybody no. recommend that we use that level of free cash. So. Actually, can I make a suggestion? Even if it existed. Oh. You know. Can we stop calling it free cash? I'd love to. Because yeah. it's not but free it's, cash. It's, that's the technical Cost term. Actually, <laughs> no. I mean, it's not, that's not the technical term for what we're filling the gap with. We All just, right, what is it? It's just cash. Cash. Cash from somewhere. And like that's you right. say, we haven't figured out where it's coming from. Okay. 
that's even more <laughs> of a so, misnomer than free cash. So cash. Let, let, let me just back up to my thought on this. At our last meeting, the, 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 the little subcommittee presented what we believe is, yes, this is the level services that we have now with no, no additions. Other nothing. than contractual. Actually, there's no contractual stuff on here because all the contracts have expired. Right. It's only, um, it's nothing. It's absolutely, it's only what's been given in the past or their step, or um, step raises. Step increases, yeah. step increases. That's the only thing that's built in here. There's, there's no, no colas. No colas. No colas. No uniform allowance increases. No boot allowance increases. No weapons right. allowance increase. No school teacher increase for... Professional development. Yeah, there's none of that in here. It's all, this is what we all agreed is... And, and we're at that and point. We're still showing significant deficits. That's my point. Yes, right. and, and this okay. is. But we've all agreed this is a starting point, and now we need to figure out what to do next. And I agree with you now. Is how do we? <laughs> I mean, we have a discussion at the end of our select board meeting, which in the executive session is how to start dealing with negotiations for contracts, because all of our contracts are up this year, and we have to negotiate new and ones. The, and the schools. And the school is up. Yeah, we're all in alignment finally. Um, so yes, we do have to, even if you, even if we come up with the fact that we only give people 2%, like we told them to make a 2% budget, um, we only cut this deficit for the next year in half. So we go from the 700,000 deficit to 300,000 if it's only, wait, wait, yeah, that's all we do, we cut it in half. We're still short. And I completely agree with you, Howard. And I have short, no. And you're short 300000 because you're using 300000 of free cash to fund the capital. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's where it is. Right. So, if, but if we did a 2%, yeah, we cut it in half, is the way I figured it. And we do have to somehow, I guess that's the discussion for tonight is what do we, how do we, what magic rock do we look under next? Yeah. And, and we, well, having been on this committee for a number of years, let me tell you, there are no magic rocks. You took them all. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And tomorrow, when the new governor takes his walk down the aisle, um, it looks like just the state's $1.1 billion in the hole. So I'm sure that's going to affect all the towns in Massachusetts at some point here. No matter where he gets a little bit of money, I'm sure he's not going to cover that. Well, if he does have that magic rock, we got to find it. But. David? So uh, the folks from the Department of Revenue who uh, talked to you twice about uh, five-year projections have always said that there are too many variables uh, and that if you go out farther than three years, you're always seeing a sea of red ink. And it just happens to be that case. I'm not suggesting in that in the slightest that we should be using these numbers of free cash in order to balance the budget. I'm just showing what the impact of that would be. This, well, is, a, this is a hypothetical using a lot of data with a lot of variables built into it in, in order to come up with and, some. And my point tonight is not to say that we're using free cash to do this or others or to solve that issue because it isn't going to get solved tonight. My goal is we need to plan. We should have started a couple of years ago doing this, but we're here now. Mm -hmm. So we need to plan now. You know, it isn't just a question of cobbling FY 2016 together to get a budget. You, you, you've got to plan for those five years. Right, because going back to the point that this is a projection only based on what we're doing now. Level service. Those projections are based on so levels. we also need to wrap in other potential dire needs somewhere, many places, whatever, that aren't even accounted for yet. And the places that are available to cut are dwindling each year as we trim these budgets and trim them and trim them. Um, you're getting to a point where to make a substantial cut. You know, if you're trying to get a half a million dollars worth of cuts, mm -hmm. I, I don't think. I don't see how you're going to do that. Yeah, it's and if you're looking at increases in revenue, I think we've tweaked all the little areas that we can, and you're not going to see anything sustain new growth. Uh, you get a little bump here and there, so you're stuck with increasing taxes. 
And if you're looking at increasing taxes, everybody in the room should be aware that if you go and you pass an override, you're looking at about a year plus before that hits on the on the tax rate before you have that that's, money. That's a key point. I don't think a lot of people do realize the lag factor. And if you don't get that passed, you need enough time to figure out how you're going to how you are going to cobble something together. So this year's budget isn't just this year's budget. We're going to be looking at what we're going to do for four or five years out. I think and, you're right. And it's critical that we integrate that into every discussion with every department head. That's right. And I think that's the, we're off to that kind of a start. I think that it's not something that we can have a long, long discussion about and solve. I think this is going to be something that is going to be, if we have this on our minds as we're meeting the departments during the season, we've already asked them to, to cut what they, their level services to uh, within a 2% and to come and tell us what the impact of that would be or tell you and we'll be there. Uh, and we'll ask, not, we can ask questions and um, this is the point where it's going to begin to get aired out to the public and just, just what's going on. I don't think that we can talk about numbers and uh, it's not the same as talking about it with a department head about what it's actually going to do to their... Um, and it should be a discussion budget. not just on the operational budget. But when you take a look at all your warrant items that you're looking at, when you spend that money, that free cash is gone. Hey, maybe we yeah. could have a public hearing. I think that's a great idea, Molly. Thank you. <laughs> Every maybe meeting's public, so it's all right here. Everything's public. Yeah, we're always public. <coughs> Weekly. I mean, one of the Weekly. things we talked Weekly. about as, as, a sub, as a little subcommittee is, is OPEB. Do, do we actually talk about doing a small, an override for OPEB just to address the OPEB shortage, shortfall? Because as the OPEB numbers grow in the budget to just make up for what we're missing, if we took care of that now, that saves us, uh, that saves some of the revenue. There are lots of little discussions There's to lots figure that of, out. But, but, but just remember that every Two, a two and a half percent rise in taxes gives you about what three hundred thousand dollars, just yeah. a tad under, like two ninety something. That's it. So, so if you're down six hundred or eight hundred thousand dollars, that's two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah, you're three years and behind. Half. But remember, our revenue projections already figure in an two increase of two, two and a half. half. Yeah. So you're not looking at a five percent. You're looking at seven and a half. Yeah. Eight. Mm -hmm. All right. And that just gets us even. One of the other things is, is um, the CPA funds. I mean, we're already we're kind of self-taxing ourselves the CPA time funds. Do we need to stay at the rate we're at and maybe lower that rate if we're going to change, change and ask for an override? Um, those are other things we need to talk about. There's a whole litany of things to talk about, but yeah. we need to start talking. We do, and I think that's our next big talk in our tri-board meeting. Well. Remember, 2016 is tick, tick, tick. It's you know, right there. It's yeah, coming right there. 90 days. I know. Well, if we you're going to change the CPA thing, it, you would do that at town meeting. You have you to do it. Yeah. And so, there would be a delay, too. So that would, you wouldn't want to delay that one. That one has to be annual, correct? The, the way that you change CPA is by the same process by which you adopted CPA. So however this town did it. Annual town meeting. Annual, annual. And an election. Was and an election afterwards, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, there's a. I mean, Howard's completely right. It's. And if you get rid of CPA funds, I mean. I it's not that, that you want to get rid of it. No, no. But I'm just, I'm just saying, for everything that you get rid of, there's also another impact. Right. The but state matches yeah. our funds, yeah. and over the eight or nine years that we've had CPA or ten years, it's what, been generated a lot of money. Over a million one. Right. That's just in state funds coming in to match, to match our funds. Right. And so. Yeah. If I could get back to what um, Guilford was suggesting, um, the year that uh, our worst year going out, nineteen, recognizing that we get redder as it goes further out, and the one that you illustrated as showing that we're going to in fiscal nineteen, we're looking at one point one million dollar deficit. Half, almost five hundred thousand of that is OPEP. Otherwise, our deficit would be. 
about 500,000, which looking out five years isn't quite so bad. So a lot of this is accountable to OPEB. Right. And it has been a thought of mine, too, that if we could pull OPEB out of the budget and maybe address that by override and take care of benefits, maybe that's one way to go. These are things that I really think that we ought to talk about. What's the best way to to get this uh, get a get a handle on this? And that would, if we could pull OPEB out of that budget and, and address it in any other way, it would. I think what would be helpful is to have the next meeting. We develop a strategy. I mean, it's just it's a strategy discussion uh -huh. to say this is exactly what we're going to address because you can only deal with so many of these variables. Do we how yeah, how are, no, how are no, to address no, 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 no. that? No, we have to address the whole five years as to how we're getting from point A to point B. I, I agree, but I'm saying that the next meeting, I think we need to we need to collectively agree on you know like your top ten or whatever that are going to give you the biggest bang for, for the, the buck, buck. Right. Yeah. and really completely vet those issues. Yes. So. To, our next meeting is not until the third, fourth of February. Sounds right. Do yeah. we want to just dedicate since we have the since we have it now, this is what well, we've agreed. Right. It yeah. is the final right. Final smile thing. Yeah, I don't think the school committee got that. No. You didn't? No. no. Oh. Yeah, it only apparently went out. I, I okay. it only went out to the subcommittee and it wasn't part of the what went out to the entire board. I sent okay. it out to mine so we'll, at my board this afternoon. We just got ours tonight. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. Okay, and then the school committee never got it. So we'll get them all out tomorrow. He was waiting for you were waiting for you their were waiting numbers. for us, I think. Well you're waiting for the school's number, which is Oh, that was a lot. Yeah, we did that. No. Yeah, no. Yeah, we've already no, got I that. No, I think it was a misunderstanding. I so, don't think that. Um, so if we actually get these out, do we want to say that our third our, meet, our third meeting of this month, we come in at 6.30 or 6 and strategize? Well, what, do you have, what, have, what do you have on the agenda? Why can't we do it right at 7 o'clock? We could. We don't have, I don't know what we have on the agenda. Okay, so you're looking at the 21st? Yes. All right, so... <coughs> A meeting with the uh, public safety uh, uh, budgets, uh, police, fire, uh, ambulance. Um, we have an over uh, executive session issue, but we can defer that. Uh, that's the main thing. So you're meeting with uh, public safety on their budgets. Well, do you want to start? <coughs> I think earlier would be better. Start at six thirty. Give ourselves thirty minutes. Yeah. And that's on the twenty. What? First. 21st. 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 
move some of that savings somewhere else. But Just what happens? Right. But what happens if oil goes back to hundred dollars a barrel in 2016? You've got to be ready to have the ability to put that back in in subsequent years. Otherwise, you've you've just grown the deficit. And see, that's where that's where the research part of it is. You're going to sit down with a department head and say, uh, you know, line item X Y Z is twenty thousand dollars less this year than it was last year, and they should have an explanation for you. But that doesn't mean that for the next four years after that, it is either going to be on a downtrend or flat. It might go back up. And these are all of the things that you need to know in order to put that strategy in place. Yeah, but Did that make any sense? Yeah, but our deficit numbers <laughs> projected are much higher than they've ever been. Yes. Yeah. And to try to find a half a million dollars in cuts. Yeah. Right. It's going to be very painful. Have we ever projected five years ahead before that? No, no we, and, we, and, we, and, we, and we've so never bad. had OPEC, the, right. and we've the elephant in the room, yeah. hanging over our heads. I'm not saying either. a million three, I'm saying 500,000. You know, and yeah. I guarantee you that in a year or two, we will be sitting in this room, or people will be sitting in this room, trying to figure out how to cut 500,000 out, and it's, I just don't see it. Right. Plus, yeah. So we need we need to be looking at things like you know, I'll say one that would be on my short list employee benefits. Right. Right. It's a big line item. Right. All of it. inclusive. All of it. Yes. All of it, and you can't have a departmental conversation about employee benefits. That's right. That's right. Collective bargaining and everything else gets involved. It's everybody, and you really right. can't treat schools to really you do teach, treat town employees. You got to right. treat them all treat them all the same. It's just but it can be changed whether it's collective bargaining or not. It yes. still can be changed. Right. But we have to have start that discussion now. So, so what are we going to do with that half hour? Because we can just talk and talk and talk. No. The idea is to make a list. Yes. Yes. So I come up with our top ten where we want to start looking at. We need to develop a formal five-year plan. <laughs> right. But you start with, you start yes. there and then you figure out, okay, so what's the plan of attack to address those issues? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And who's going to be involved in all this? All right, so we're all set. Okay. We need to make a motion to adjourn the, formally adjourn the travel? No, no. 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 So no. Each, each committee is meeting individually, so. Okay. So we're dissolving right. the tri board. We're continuing our meeting, but we're going to hang around a little bit. So you're more than welcome to stay. Because <coughs> you've got, we're going to see, we want to see what's going on with the treasurer position here in number one. And then we're going to go downstairs for an additional meeting. Okay. All right. So thank you very much for coming, everybody. Thank, thank you. you.